Every day, Scotland's fishermen head out to sea, hunting the fish that go on your dinner plate. Quite a few fish suppers there, I would say. Look at that. Spend all week looking for that. Whoa, much already. Risking their lives in Britain's most dangerous occupation. Oh, no, 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 no. We've now got a Southeast gale up on us. For these fishermen, every haul is a gamble. No, no, really bad haul. That's some beauty. Woo! Two little dance. Coming home to land their catch at one of Europe's biggest fishing ports, Peterhead. Here, the competition is fierce. 120, 120, 130, 135. No, good deal. So will they strike it big or return empty-handed? The North Sea is a vital hunting ground for Scotland's trawlers. Here, boats gather to get the best prawns. Westro has been at sea for four days, under the watchful eye of owner James West. Skipper for 23 years now. Yeah, wow, feels like a long time saying it like that. Yeah, I started the sea on my dad's boat. We've tried lots of things, uh, different types of fisheries. Now we're at the prawns. Launched just two months ago, Westro is the newest boat in the Peterhead fishing fleet. I have got a video of the launching day and I, uh, it's in my phone. I have, I've looked at it twice today already. Here we go. Uh. I'm in the ship, Westro. Go, Westro. It's a smile on my face just seeing him. You have no idea what it's like out here. I mean, to just. Oh, you're out here, you're away from your family. You miss them a lot. Even though James misses his family, he has no choice but to be out here at sea earning money. This boat was expensive. This cost just under two and a half million pounds. I mean, say that has to be paid for. I didn't hear that money, so I went to the bank for a bit. I would rather have a new boat than a fancy car. Uh, however, when we have that good sound, it's a dream to have got it now. Sometimes it's a fine line between dream and nightmare line, but, uh, yeah. So far on this trip, James has been struggling to find the catch. He needs a big haul of prawns to get him back on track. Over on the west coast of Scotland, Peterhead boat, the Ocean Endeavour, is targeting Haddock. And away we go again. Skipper John Buchan spends his summer working out of Ullapool Harbour, so he's closer to Rockall, his fishing grounds. From Rockall to Peterhead, it's, it's a good two days steaming, where it's just over a day for come, uh, come here to Ullapool. Beautiful little place. Tourist hotspot in the summer. Absolutely heaving with folk. Usually it's peeing a rain. <laughs> Midges everywhere. Also on board the Ocean Endeavour is one of the youngest fishermen in the Scottish fleet, 17-year-old trainee, Gavin Burnett. Ten months he's been here now. He just loves the job, absolutely daft for a job. Absolutely daft full stop like me. It's brilliant for me to hear somebody come on board the boat fast just itching to get into the industry and learn. The deckhands are all getting older just now. You need young guys to come back and he's, I try and do my part. I take some guys into the industry and uh, learn them up if they're willing to work. This week he's been promoted to cook. Hopefully it's all right for a view. Tommy gave me a bit of a hand, like. Tommy had to help you I saw it. No, he gave me a bit of a hand because I forgot a few things, but. Oh my god. Bit of a litmus alone for you. He, he, he needed help marking a salad. <laughs> First time cooking. After three days of bad catches on the west row, a rare sunny day boosts the mood. Wiggy wiggy guys. Making the most of it is James's brother, first mate Stephen. Look like the fishing's getting a bit less in this area, so I'm thinking of having a sunbathe in the top deck if we don't get much here just now. He must be feeling the nice weather. Also enjoying the sunshine is deckhand 
Reese. I dare you to jump in. What the hell, Lovely? This is what it is. That week, we had some pretty dire fishing at times, but it was one of the most beautiful weeks of weather I would say I've ever put in at sea. So far, James has been scraping by on small catches, which isn't enough when you have a boat to pay for. Heave up, heave up. It's another small haul, and the crew are way behind target now. Signs they're good for this area now, I'd say. The last few hauls have steadily been getting less and less. It's just kind of barely enough now, just kind of on the limit of what we'll be happy to catch. As I work on a family boat, Ken, some brother's boat, Ken, probably more interested than, than just getting a pay for myself at the end of the day, Ken. I'm wanting to see him do well with his business side of it. We'd all rather be standing here for hours getting good fishing than this. Not sure what James's plan is, but... Hope we can find something better than this for tomorrow. In the North Atlantic, the ocean endeavour is having no problems catching haddock. There she goes, there she goes. Whoa, much already. Oh. Rookie Gavin has a new role this trip. He has to bring the fish on board. Not a big haul. Keep up pace, we'll be up full in no time, man. Look at that. Gavin's really interested in taking on different roles and learning more of the, the workings of the boat. And I'm really enjoying teaching him. Um, it's great to hear someone who's enthusiastic about it. <laughs> He's certainly enthusiastic about it. He's just bouncing. <laughs> Look at that. Lovely, Eric. It's a belt of that, you. Hopefully, keep getting holes like that. Can I be it? Quite a few fish suppers there, I would say. <laughs> yeah. When Gavin isn't hauling the nets, he's sorting the catch. This is what we came for, some big, juicy, big, fat haddocks. 350 miles out in the Atlantic Ocean. Not many teenagers would be excited by working a trawler, but for Gavin, it's been a lifelong dream. I've wanted to be Dean fishing since I've been climbing this slope. I enjoy working for John Day. My father was a fisherman and I wanted to just do that, follow him up. Like when I first went away, it was a whole new, different experience. It was a lot to learn and I thought I got on pretty well. I've been doing this for a long time, hopefully. As long as I can. There's no rest for Gavin. After hours of gutting, he's back on deck, hauling the nets. 20 hours now of non-stop action, and he's still as enthusiastic now as he was the very first haul. And the fish just keep on coming. There's nothing better when you see a haul of fish coming out of the, out of the sea. You can just see in the distance the other air bubbles coming up and the, the, the sea turns a light blue and she explodes out of the sea. There's, just, there's no feeling like it. It's just fantastic. It's just it's what, we're, what we're there for. And it, when it happens, haul after haul after haul, and you just know you're on a winner and it's going to be a good trip. And the more fish you get, the more money you get in your pocket, the better the business does. Ah, it's looking pretty good. It's looking very good. Didn't take much holes I got to see was on my way home. Some nice big yens in there. It's a cracker at yen. Been fishing deluxe, absolutely brilliant. Beautiful weather and fantastic fishing. There have been a string of bad hauls on the west row. With no sign of improvement, the pressure is on James to make a change. Hey, James is taking a brave move. He's wasting 15 hours southeast. The devil's hole. Oh, well, we've good fishing there recently, so we're going to give it a try again. James will move fishing grounds 120 miles across the North Sea to the devil's hole. 
for the crew, there's only one thing more important than catching fish. Supper time. Fad doesn't like to sit, sit around a plate of good food. Hit a laugh with everybody. And we always make an effort every night. Max I had a bit more relaxed skin, a bit more homely, probably. Maybe like it used to be work, work, work all the time, constantly. Dig in, boys. Aye, well. The conversation doesn't escape fishing for long, and the crew are soon talking about the first catch at the Devil's Hole. What do you think? What are you hoping for? Somebody put a prediction on if we're going to hallway. 22 uh, stone. I've told you mine. Well, tell me again. 35. 35, 22, full bag. You think we're going to get? 40. 40. 40. Nice one. Hot topic is this year's fishing awards, an annual celebration of fishermen and their achievements. James has been nominated uh, for Fisher of the Year again. He won it. Uh, which year did you win it? I got nominated for the Young Fisher of the Year in 2009, which I won. I have no idea how it's happened, but somebody's uh, putting my name forward, so I'm up for it this year as well. Uh, which is uh, humbling, so I'm looking forward to that. We're getting that. Some sort of swanky do in Aberdeen. We'll be listening closely for a mention in the speech that I'm sure he's prepared. <laughs> Um, <laughs> what is this guy? On the ocean endeavour, the meals are being prepared by trainee Gavin. A big task for a 17-year-old who still lives at home with his mum. I am enjoying the cooking, but I'm hoping it's all right for everybody else, Ken. First time cooking is on this boat. Never, I never cooked at home. Looks all right. right. Smells good. I've learned quite a lot in the past year. Yeah, it's been a really good experience and everything. The cooking was a bit sticky to start off with. Didn't have anything, any clue about it. it was sometimes asking John if it do add, if it do add with this. There's a heap of different stuff I didn't know about it, but then I got there. That's the best part, garlic bread. Gavin's also been nominated for this year's fishing awards. He's up for trainee of the year. I'm excited for the Fishing News Awards. I'm excited to see if it happens, see if I wins. If I don't know, I'll be a bit disappointed, like. I nominated him for an award just for a, a boost of confidence to him, because Ken, he's put in the effort aboard the boat, he's starting to learn the boat, he's done quite well, and he's certainly the best trainee I've had, so why should he not get an award? Made a fine job, but... Although it would have been better if he'd actually taken the pasta out of the water before he served it. <laughs> Back on the west row, Skipper James has sailed to one of the deepest parts of the North Sea. We've been steaming for 14 hours. So that's 14 hours of downtime, 14 hours of burning fuel, and 14 hours and nothing coming in. So this has to be better than yesterday. I've got a good feeling about it. Spring in my step, up, shower this morning, shower and a shave, get trim. Yeah, fishing deluxe. If we could just add the fish to it. This is a pretty exciting one this time. First haul here at the Devil's Hole. Really looking for a good haul here. Sure, James is there, just jungling in the wheelhouse. Any mud, Steve? Aye, it's quite muddy, quite muddy. Stephen, anything there? Maybe 10 of rocks. Oh, that a? But it's a little bit of fish. Bit of size? Yeah. Aye, oh, it's, it's a nice size prawn. Aye, aye. The change in location hasn't brought a change in luck, and it's another small haul. Just keep going, keep trying, keep going. Don't give up till the time runs out. Till the time runs out. That's just what it is. In the North Atlantic, Ocean Endeavour has been catching huge numbers of haddock. But when it comes to fishing, things can go wrong at any time. Come on. And that's stuck tight in the bottom just now, 180 feet behind the starboard side. The net is caught on the seabed, putting strain on the ropes and wires. 
tensions are far too high. She's up at nine tons now, so... I'll stop her before I break something. We'll have to haul a lot back. When the net sticks in the bottom, you've got in the back of your mind. Again, you really hope it's nothing too bad, because, again, there's 60, 70,000 pounds worth of gear on your stern. So haul all the wires back, and hopefully time we're hauling back, it'll maybe jump, but she's got a tight hold in the bottom just now. It's almost 200 feet of difference between one side and the other. She's took a real bad hold. Even back fast, lads, even back fast. Even back is when we start the winches, and because the net's stuck in the bottom, the boat gets dragged back to the obstruction, and you can be fast up and down, which just means that you're trying to pull directly up to try and get it, uh, to try and get it free. That can be a bit hairy at, at times, <laughs> squeaky bum time. <laughs> just now the net's the net's stopped in the water. Nothing's been through the water, so the fish start to go out through the meshes of the net. Hopefully she'll come free, okay, and doesn't tear the net. If we are fast and everything's under great strain, then we get the guys to stay away from the sides where the wires are. Should that break, it'll just come up like a whip, and it, depending on where it breaks, um, it could be catastrophic. Sir, 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 we're in luck, we're in luck. Just like that, the nets become unstuck. Good job, guys! and the crew can breathe a sigh of relief. Back in the North Sea, there's a rude awakening for the Westro crew. Now they've got a problem with their fishing gear. Imagine getting wakened by that noise. Sound sleep. Two minutes later, they'll hear that gear on. Wakey, wakey, ladies! Right oh, right oh, right oh! Let's have you up! We're gonna haul! Right oh, right oh! Fast as you can! Wait, do it. <sighs> We've got sensors all over the gear, and uh, as soon as it showed an indication something was going wrong, I just wanted to pull up quick because you can damage your nets really quick. Break up both sides. The nets carrying a huge weight of mud was not a prawn in sight. You see all the mud. It's teeming out the cord ends. We're just towing along nicely, and it must have caught that dog in. This side's not even stopped the lift. Keep a watch for any damage. No profit in mending nets. No pay in mending nets. Oh, that's a waste of drag. OK, I've got a swing of ruin. I want a swing of ruin. That's a complete waste of time. Proper embarrassment. Doing damage to nets is really fun bugging thing to do because it's unpaid work. You've got to put it back together, it's expensive, and we kind of waste the time that we are out there. Luckily, the Westro carries a spare net and the crew are able to fish on. We're not filling up as quickly as, uh, as I would hope. I really need to get a good haul so I can kind of get you in that, yeah, come on. 3 a.m. in the North Atlantic, and the ocean endeavor is still fishing. Looks to be a fine boggy again here now. Keep him busy through the night. Hopefully by morning we'll be on our road. Every four hours, the crew have been hauling in masses of fish. Each one has to be gutted and packed away, leaving little time for sleep. If you're a good fish, it'll be solid, solid work. Barely in your bed if it's good fishing. Barely. You're tiring yet, Gov? That'll be stupid, man. Gavin has to bring the fish on board, but his concentration is slipping. Slot! Come on, wiggy, wiggy! Whoa, whoa, whoa! Uh, it's tight! Is that all right? No, it's not all right. It's all tight. You've heaved it right on. It's got a fool. Other way. Keep going. That's it. He's a little bit more tired than he thinks he is, I think. 
his body's still full of action because he's 17 year old, but his brain stopped functioning. <laughs> Gavin can be quite unaware of the what's going on about him. You have to keep on reminding him. He's just so excited for a job and he just wants to get everything done that he just forgets of where he is and what he's doing and just try and be safe all the time. It's a big fat bag of fish here. After nine days at sea, it's the last chance for a good catch on the west throw. That's just getting ready for our last haul. Can't come quick enough. Then I tell maybe I said this, but this is probably the one haul every week where you just don't care if you catch or anything. It doesn't matter anymore. You're going home. So that's what it's all about now. After a long week, you've kind of had your fill of it, probably, and you're just ready to get away from it for a few days, do other things. But the trip isn't over yet and the last hole has come good. Finally, you couldn't have write it. A whole trip, about 30 holes, all mediocre. The last one, just a way to head in. That's just a jackpot there. Oh, I would think there's 20 bucks of bronze there. It's been taking us a whole day to catch that amount up till now. The last hole's the best one. Look at that. I'd just spend all week looking for that. We finally found a mountain of them. Jackpot, eh? Good size of prawns. We're going to get quite a lot out of this. Fill quite a lot of boxes. Fantastic. Even though we're targeting prawns, you do still catch fish. And uh, you kind of stick a sign on your net saying, no fish allowed as such, so. Oh, I'm just so pleased to see some. I'm just kind of, I can't, you kind of hardly believe it. So frustrating. But we've had a trip of just averages, and three to four thousand pound a day. The final bumper catch has saved this trip and James can focus on getting home in time for the fishing awards. We're going to the fishing news awards, so uh, yeah, time's up for that reason. I'm delighted. Trip done, I am going to walk home to that. I'm expecting a, it'll be a good night, see a few people I know, and win or lose or just go, I'm just delighted to be going to it. Good fishing isn't always good news. To keep stocks sustainable, there's a limit on how much fish can be caught every year, known as a quota, and there are penalties for anyone going over their allowance. Skipper John has to keep track of how many fish the Ocean Endeavour has caught. Quotas in the North Sea and West Coast of Scotland get drastically cut this year. Millions and millions of pounds. If it comes to halfway through the year and the cod quota is taken, that means a whole North Sea shot. Quota for rock all haddocks doubled this year, which is, which is a blinking good thing because it would be in a sticky wicket if we didn't hear it here to come After only four days fishing, John has over a thousand boxes of fish on board, close to the limit. Another big catch, and the crew can head home early. Last haul. <laughs> Just waiting to see. Hopefully she's going to go up like a submarine. Just enough to fill all the rest of the boxes, will be fine. Oh, here she goes, I see the loom coming now. Oh yes, that'll do it. <laughs> and all the king's horses and all the king's men, home, homeward bound. There's no better feeling at all than going home with a full boat. You've, you've done your job and then you're uh, heading home to see the wife and kids. Magic. What a night, eh? Beautiful. End of trip, full up, and better heading home. Time to embarrass the kids. Yippee ki yay! <laughs> Booyah! In the early hours, James West is sailing into Peterhead Harbour. Now, I've nothing like coming here. It's the thought of seeing Abdi get home. 
See the farm way? That's what it's all about. That's why you do it. James got the, the Fishing News Awards tonight, so we'll all be uh, getting ready to go to that later on. Quite exciting. Hopefully he takes it home. Well, it is a little bit like emptying the bank. Hopefully emptying this bank here and filling my own one. That's the idea. With the fish off the market, James and Stephen can get ready for tonight's awards ceremony. Here at the Fishing News Awards, fishermen gather to be crowned best in the business. James has been a winner here in the past. In 2009, I got nominated for uh, Young Fisherman of the Year, and that was uh, a real highlight for me because I was uh, just a uh, young full of the fish and loved it. Ladies and gentlemen, this was an incredibly tightly contested category, but the winner of the Demersal Fisherman of the Year Award goes to Dave Driver of Brixham. Well done, Dave. James has missed out this year, but true to form, he isn't going to give up easily. I was up for Young Fisherman of the Year twice before I won it, so I might need a second go at this one. Next up is another Peterhead hopeful, Gavin. After an outstanding 10 months working for John, he's been rewarded with his own nomination. It's time for the Trainee Fisherman of the Year Awards. The shortlisted nominees are Gavin Burnett and Rory Brickley. Please come to the stage. As long as you put in the effort, you would easily manage to learn a few things, but People that want to go out there and not learn just for the money, okay, it must be boring, okay? they not wanting to learn anything. And the Trainee of the Year Award goes to Gavin Burnett. Winner, winner. Chicken dinner. <laughs> Chuffed his bits winner, that like, Ken. Oh, I'm fair proud of him, like I, delighted. A lot of the trainees I've seen. He's certainly the best team has been proven tonight. He's a trainee of the year. Fantastic. Next time, it's full throttle in the North Sea as the Sardonics races to get to the catch. Trying to go faster than me, you see. But when I want to walk. Look, see, it's even smoking. And on board the Reliance, David Clark takes on the skipper's role for the very first time. Your heart's pumping at like 200 mile an hour. Excited to see what's there. 